Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Fernanda. If you're new here, um, I'm Fernanda and I'm a chemical engineer. I started my PhD in chemical engineering at Yale University this semester. So I've decided that I was gonna record all my journey and tell you guys about it in case you are you want to pursue your PhD or right now you're pursuing your PhD. So um, hopefully you find something valuable from my videos. But before we get started, um, a lot of people ask me where I get my jewelry from and right now my favorite brand is Ana Luisa. I love them because they have such beautiful, stunning pieces, but their mission is to be sustainable. And I think that's super important and like super cool that they do that. Um, they offset 100% of their carbon emissions. Imagine that like, with everything that we're going through right now, I think that's super important. And they also use 100% recycle gold for their pieces and the packaging, it's also recyclable. I was super happy when I received my pieces because I knew that I could recycle the packaging. So super happy about that. And the pieces, they last long. It's They're very good quality. And the price is super, super affordable. So you can find, you know, at different price ranges but um, the prices start with $39, only $39. I think that's super good. So take advantage of the Black uh, Friday sale they're gonna have. Also, I'm gonna leave my discount down below in the description box in, in case you're interested. Um, I have these Venus earrings. They were only $59. And also this Mama necklace is only $55 and also this alisa necklace which i i love it it's 149 dollars but if you go to a website you're gonna see that there are different there are a lot of pieces and different prices i'm pretty sure you're gonna find something that you'd like so take advantage um, of, as I said of the Black Friday sale because holidays are coming up and obviously you want to save get those gifts but save at the same time so if you have any questions about it let me know so now let's get back to business and talk about my PhD journey so I don't know if you watched my previous video where I talked like I think I was um, that was like uh, one week after I started my PhD and I was already feeling overwhelmed because the classes, I don't know, like the things that I was learning, I felt like it was like so crazy, you know, like the material look, like I couldn't understand anything for some parts of the courses. And also I feel like it was a lot of like the, my imposter syndrome that I had to deal deal with that and I did talk about that in my other video and you know like now that it's already one week before Thanksgiving so like um, you know like almost the whole semester already passed I can tell you that it was definitely mostly my imposter syndrome that was making me feel like that because you know like while i was an undergrad i got used to understanding everything easier like faster so coming you know starting my phd taking graduate classes and like things being hard again kind of like maybe i forgot about that and you know having that challenge i was like oh my god like i don't know anything but then i thought okay i just need to work harder and i know i have to get this like there's no other option i have to get it some some way you know so what i did is that i just study harder and like i tried to be smart with it as well and started going to all the office hours and creating meetings with my professors and trying to like see you know how i can like keep up and understand everything and then i realized that you know i started making friends and it was harder because you know i'm pretty sure everyone's taking online classes right now and it's so hard to make friends when like you everything it's online like how are you gonna talk to someone over a zoom meeting like hey you like yeah let's oh well you can do like privately you can text them but 
it's kind of weird i mean i'm pretty sure you understand so you but once i started making friends and like talking to them i realized that i was not the only one that it was like a huge transition for all the phd students and also because like you know you're going to a different university so the way they teach as well is different like the culture for the professors is different and the environment so it was a lot of getting used to that as well and you know i feel like the amount of work i was always used to that because as an undergrad i worked full time so i was used to having a lot to do but it was just like the way you know they teach and you know the amount of work i feel like you like right now at Yale I have more homeworks and like the homeworks are harder and you really have to invest yourself but it was definitely um, you know I had to get used to it you know what I mean so um, yeah so like the whole semester I thought I was gonna create more videos but I wasn't able to create more videos because I was very busy like it be like as I said it became better like I started understanding more but also like I had to study more, you know, to keep up and and um, also because I was doing research as well and I was applying to fellowships. So yeah, that's another update that I applied to two fellowships and oh my god, like <laughs> it's so much work. If you are applying for your PhD or you're already in your PhD and your advisor already has um, funding, then that's great i mean i'm so happy for you because for the people that need to apply for funding it's so much work my advisor he didn't have funding he doesn't have so like i had to apply for the funding and he helped me a lot with the applications but oh my god there's so much work because they're so prestigious and you really like you only have an essay like for example for the nsf you only have the personal statement which is like three pages and then you have the research um, statement and it's only two pages so you literally only have five pages to explain why you're the best option like you cannot even upload your resume like how can you show off and like uh, that's another thing like it's so hard like for me at the beginning it was like okay I know I have to sell myself but it was kind of weird um, to show other people what I wrote because I was obviously trying to show off and, and that's what you have to do, you have to say sell yourself but it feels weird that other people read it because then you're like, oh yeah, it's like I'm the best you know, it just feels weird I don't know if like <laughs> that happens to you because like we have to create essays for undergrad, for graduate school, for fellowships so yeah, I mean, I think I'm good at like selling myself um, but yeah, it just feels weird when other people read it and like you can see that they're reading it because I did a peer review um, group and if you are applying for anything and there's an opportunity to do a peer review, um, you know, be, to be part of a peer review group, then I will encourage you to do it because it's super helpful that other people that don't know you at all read your essay and you know they don't know you they don't know your story so they can tell you okay this doesn't sound strong you're missing this what do you mean by this like they gave me so much feedback and i changed the essay so much and you know when i create the first draft i thought it was fine but you know sometimes like you know your story so well then when you tell it you don't realize that you're missing like you're missing to tell some pieces of your story so i would recommend that either if you cannot um, join a peer review group then just like show it to like other people i mean although like if you tell people that you know and they know your story you know kind of like defeats the purpose of what i'm saying but also you can go to the writing center at your university that i also did that so like i circle my essay with the peer review group with the writing center with my advisor and yeah that was it <laughs> but yeah they helped me a lot i changed it a lot but yeah it was like a lengthy process and we didn't have a project we had to come up with a project so we did with my advisor 
we did a lot of literature review and trying to like find like a like an appealing project but also that we liked you know and yeah so it was crazy um and then after that was done for the other fellowship like at least i already had something done so i just change it a little bit so we'll see wish me luck um so but if you have any questions about like fellowship applications and like the whole process and how to create the essays and all of that like let me know and i can create a video about that so another thing that i was doing this semester is that i joined this committee to increase diversity in my department so my department is the chemical and environmental engineering ideal and so we want to increase the diversity mostly like in in graduate school um for like phd students or like masters and postdoc um right now there's th that number it's like very low and also of the people who apply you know it's very low so we i i joined this committee because my advisor is like super into it um and i meant that, that was a good way because i met uh, uh that was a good way to meet other phd students as well since we're doing everything in zoom um so that's good advice to like try to join other you know projects committees uh clubs um so you can meet people because it's hard if you're not in the university because i'm doing everything from home i don't know if i said that before but yeah i'm working from home and i live like an hour away from yale right now i'm gonna move into next year probably like next summer but anyway i'm getting sidetracked what was i talking about <laughs> um the comedy the comedy that i was part of yeah so <laughs> yeah so i started being part of this comedy to increase the uh, under the the percentage of the underrepresented students i'm an underrepresented student because i'm a woman i'm latina in stem so i do want more classmates that look like me and obviously i want to see people that look like me to join stem and to stay in stem but i want to increase the percentage of the underrepresented students in graduate school so I've been doing that and you know we created this action plan and at the end I was elected to be co-chair of the committee so there's one for the environmental side and one for the chemical engineering side and I'm the one for the chemical engineering side so I'm super excited because we've been creating recruitment events and I'm so excited about those because I think that's a great opportunity for people to create connections um, you know like if they're applying to yell and that's a great way uh, if they come so they can see how the department works and the environment in the department and the culture and so they can meet professors and the research and all of that so they can make the connection so when they apply professors already have a face to that application and i didn't do that when i applied i didn't even know about this recruitment event so if you're looking to apply to graduate school try to see if your university has recruitment events and join them you know even you know like if you haven't been accepted do it in the fall semester of applications because like usually the applications are um in the fall semester at the end of the fall semester so like right now it's like the perfect opportunity to join this recruitment event so you can talk to the professors make that connection so that's one of the things that i've been working on my classes my family obviously um for those who don't know i i'm mary and i have a two-year-old it's his i'm like this no it's not for two <laughs> two-year-old and he's so cute and now he's demanding more time for me so like he wants to play like he's aware now so we we have to do activities and i have to be there it's not like a baby like with a baby i could study and then i'll have him like this in my lap and we're fine but now like i have to actually you know play with him and it's so fun like don't get me wrong it's like super fun this is i think like my favorite um I mean like honestly like I've liked every stage for different reasons but I love this one because he's so much fun so anyway that's why I have been like super busy during the semester but I had a revelation 
this semester and I wanted to share with you guys because if you're going through the same things that I was going through I want to give you the solution the answer because yeah it was not fun so okay like I moved to the US like I'm originally from El Salvador I moved to the US when I was 19 years old and since I came here I you know I've had to work so I've always worked and study and you know like the I mean this is not only my case like here in the United States the uh, exists the grind culture I think that's what it's called <laughs> but yeah like people just want to work 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 and it's like you see everyone working so you feel like you're gonna fall behind so everyone just gets used to working so much like to the point that it's unhealthy and i was in that stage so i came here and i wasn't living with my parents so i had to you know work to like sustain my living and um well thankfully like i went to school for free i mean like they the school pay for me so thankfully that was good but anyway like i had to pay other things so i always work and i was always in that mindset you know i was always working and hustling and like doing this doing that doing that and i was just so into that that i didn't realize that life was passing by right i i used to go out like before having a baby i used to go out a lot with my friends and and i loved like hanging out with people so i was kind of like it, it was a balance you know there, there was a balance because i've always been that type of person like i don't like being at home i just wanted to like be with my friends and like have fun so i did have about ba that balance but then when i became a mom like i had to be at home more obviously and then the pandemic came and you cannot even go out so all i could think of was work and it just like became so unhealthy because i was working like i don't know like 11 hours a day or 10 hours a day and sometimes i will only have a day off and but i mean i would like people wouldn't even tell me like oh you don't have a day off it was me you know because I'm a PhD student, like I manage my time, I don't have to clock in and clock out. It was me. And you know, the only like quote unquote free time it was in the morning when I was with my son and he will come he will go to he, my mother in law's house and he will spend the day there and then he will come back in the afternoon and then I was with him. But then other than that, when he went to sleep at seven PM I will keep working. And it was just like so weird because one day we i was like oh yeah like i'm gonna have the night off and we were watching tv with my husband and then i never liked watching tv that much i don't know why and now i started feeling kind of bored and i was like can i go to work and i'm like i mean in my mind like you know like i and you know i prefer to just go there and like do something for Instagram I mean it's that's like my hobby but it's also you know like you it's like you're doing something you're not relaxing and um, and or like studying and, and I like I couldn't do something without being feeling guilty that I should be being productive and it was just like taking over me you know I will go to my parents house or they will come here or I will go to my mother-in-law house and I, will, I was always like doing something because something was due and then you know this semester I started speaking with a therapist for the first time in my life and she told me something you know like I kind of was asking her I feel like pe people tell me I work too much and I don't feel like I work too much I mean I feel like I work a lot but I mean it's like 10 hours a day like not normal and, you know for a PhD student and you and she was like I mean I feel like that's that you know that can happen sometimes if you're super busy but like working 11 hours per, per day since you started the semester that's not good and I started reading more about this about like resting and sleeping and it and I realized um, that it actually has a lot of benefits and I kind of knew some of them but I never like really cared but yeah I read that scientifically like I don't remember exactly like the terms but yeah sci the, the science behind it and it says that when you sleep 
then your short memories um, they become like long memories and you retain more information then at the next day you can be more productive you can concentrate better um, and you you're in a better mood I mean that's that one is a, it's an obvious one when I'm tired like I'm in a bad mood um, and all these good things and I was like okay like I need to try to sleep better sleep more and sleep better and also like I started reading more about like relaxing and doing you know like uh, self-care rituals or whatever and I started little by little I started doing that in my day-to-day -day, in a day-to-day -day basis and oh my god it helps so much like I always thought that taking time from working it was just like reduce my productivity but in reality it just helped me so much and I mean I know it can, it can sound like kind of sad like everything I'm saying but I think it's kind of common to fall into that trap and some people don't even realize that they're in there so if you're watching this and you feel like you work a lot and you don't do anything for yourself go there google and google it you you're gonna find that there's a lot of benefits there's you know scientifically proven um benefits and just start trying now it's like trying to be more effective while you work so you can work less time and then do more like things for your life you know things that you like for like self-care and sleeping more and you're gonna see that you're gonna be so much more productive um also it's like i started thinking like in this like revelation that i had is that i'm gonna do this a phd for like five or six years and i don't want to be that person for five or six years who's always working and letting life pass by i mean right now we're in the middle of a pandemic i know like i cannot even go out but just like resting living life enjoying little things and you know when you start when you go back it might feel weird it might feel boring at the beginning but then you start getting the taste of it again like you start liking it again and i just i i love it you know like i'm it's something that i learned this semester and i want to keep working obviously i'm a work in progress but i i hope that you give it a try if you're feeling that way and let me know what your thoughts are if you already have a self-care routine so my tia share with everyone in the comments or let me know if you have any questions if you wanna keep up with my journey you can follow me in my instagram at fern sulantai because i post there daily and i post college resources and woman empowerment stem related comment and you can send me a dm i'm literally just a dm away so if you have any questions i try to answer to all of my dms and help people so yeah follow me on instagram don't forget that i left the discount code in the description box down below for ana luisa's jewelry remember i'm saying i'm leaving you the discount code but also there's gonna be a big black friday sale so take advantage of that um thank you so much don't forget to give her a thumbs up to the video and to subscribe i'll see you next time